welcome back to another installment of Time to Tinker. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the rear axle assembly and differential of the car. I have purchased the correct wheel puller to remove this rear wheel from the axle. I bought this part from Antique Auto Ranch in Spokane Valley, Washington. If you're in the Inland Northwest area and you need parts for a Model T or a Model A, they have a huge assortment of nearly everything you could ever need for a Model T or a Model A. And they also offer engine rebuilding and starter and generator overhauls and lots of other services. So they're a really great resource for these old Fords. I spoke with Tom there and he was a great help with finding all the parts I need and lots of advice, really knowledgeable, so I would definitely highly recommend them. Um, at the end of the day, he even gave me a ride in his Model T and let me drive it. So that was really amazing and I really appreciated that. So thank you to Antique Auto Ranch and if you need parts, visit them. They'll probably have what you need. So let's get started with this puller. Basically what it does is it threads onto the hubcap threads on the wheel and then you can tighten down on the bolts on the end to pull the wheel off. Now these wheels are basically a really tight fit onto a tapered shaft. So when they're pushed all the way up on the shaft, they're pretty hard to get off. It is possible to get them off without the puller, but it's really hard, especially with a car that's been sitting outside for so long. And it, you really risk damaging your axle if you try any other method. This is the safest and easiest method, so I decided to do it the right way. Now if your car is running, some people say you can back off the nut. Uh, like a half a turn or a full turn, half a turn, something like that, and then put the cotter pin back in it and drive around a little bit and the wheel will loosen up and then you can take the nut off and pull the wheel all the way off. Uh, if you do that though, you really have to be careful to only take that nut off a half or one full turn, no more than a full turn, because if it, the wheel pops off too far, then it'll be riding too low on the axle when you're driving and break your axle and you're back at the starting point again. So that's only if you're really experienced and know what you're doing to do it that way. It's much safer to just use the correct tool. So that's what I'm going to do. It has these really fine threads on the inside of here. The hubcap threads on this hub are really fine little threads in there. And they're fine because the hubcaps are really thin metal and so the threads have to be really small. So there's a lot of them. And this will thread on there and then you tighten this bolt down to make sure it's snug. And this should pull it off. So we're going to get to work on that. Well, I finally got this rear wheel removed. It was really tight on there, but that's a good thing. The only way, reason you would take this wheel off an actual service of the car would be to change out the bearings inside of the hub or the brake linings, because this is the parking brake right here with the rear drum brake just for the parking brake. And that doesn't stop the car from moving, it just holds it in place as a parking brake. So that didn't get worn down very much, and the bearings don't need much attention, so these wheels rarely have to come off. So that's why they're such a tight fit. It's basically a tapered axle shaft. The wheel fits on there, and the only thing that physically holds it in place is the nut on this shaft. But it is such a tight fit along that taper and the keyway on the side of it that it just does not come off very easily at all. It's really tight. So with the puller, I was able to get this wheel removed. I had to pull down on it pretty tight, um, but it did come off. So on the inside of here is the brake drum for those rear parking brakes. That's just bolted on with the hub on the inside of the wheel there. And when I unbolt the hub, I can take that off and clean it up. Um, but the brake linings actually have quite a bit of good useful wear on them, so I'm gonna clean them up and see. But I don't see a reason to even need to replace them unless there is a specific reason with old linings this old that they need to be replaced. But there's a lot of wear on them, so I'm gonna look into that. The wheel on the other side, however, is being a bit more of a problem. It's much tighter and the uh, hubcap was not on there. It's missing that hubcap. So there's no grease on that axle. So it is really dried up and rusted on really tightly. So I put the puller on it. I've tightened down on it really tight. You can tap on it a little bit. You don't want to tap on them too much because you can break or damage the axle in the differential housing, the thrust surfaces and there can get damaged if you pound on it too hard but you can tap on it a little bit and it's recommended to tap on it a little bit if it is tight so i have done that the puller is on it and it's tightened down as tight as i can possibly get it without using a breaker bar and you don't want to tighten them down too tight as in getting a breaker bar because you can strip out the threads on the hub and then you'd have to replace your hub so i've got it tightened down really tight and we're going to let it sit there for a bit and see if it'll loosen up and if it'll pop off later so while that is sitting and hopefully getting loosened up, 
we're going to take a look at some of the other parts on the car. We're going to remove these radius arms that connect to the drive shaft and the end of the axle. And we're going to remove this leaf spring off the top. So get that stuff out of the way and start working on the drive shaft. See if we can get the torque tube and drive shaft off the differential so we can start rebuilding the rear differential and axle. Well, now we have just an axle. I got all of the accessories taken off the axle and I finally got that back wheel off. That wheel was a pain. The, it was so tight on there and that was the one that was missing a hubcap so it was rusted in there. And I put the puller on it, let it sit for a while. I had penetrating oil in there, um, although there's not much surface area for it to get into, but I tried it. Um, it just was not coming off and so I went and got a breaker bar and got some leverage on the puller and it was a really long breaker bar so I pulled on it really quite a bit really and I was reading online and people are nervous about these pullers stripping out the threads on the hub and so I was going real slow I didn't want to use that if I didn't have to um, but I figured I'd try it so I went real slow and quite a bit of force on it in the end heard a loud pop and was worried I actually broke something and so I, I looked into it and then the wheel just kind of slid right off and as far as I can tell, the pop was just the wheel finally giving out. Nothing else is broken. So um, that was really amazing. The pop was really loud and it just popped right off. But you really got to say these pullers work well because I wouldn't have wanted to pull that hard on anything else. And it did not strip the threads out. The threads are still all intact, works perfectly. The hubcap still threads on just right. So as long as you use this tool right and clamp it down really good with this clamp here, it does not ruin the hubcap threads if you use it right and go real slow with it and at least it didn't for me. So here is the torque tube of the Model T. And the Model T is a really unique drive system for the time, really quite advanced. It has this torque tube assembly which basically is a drive shaft inside of a tube itself that does not rotate. So the car doesn't have a rotating drive shaft underneath it. The drive shaft rotates inside of a tube, that's why it's called a torque tube. Now, when you think about the times, this was really advanced for 1908 when the very first Model T was built. When you think about it, so many of those old cars were chain driven with an exposed chain on the outside. Or they had exposed drive shafts like many um, of the later vehicles. But the Model T had a torque tube and Henry Ford really believed this was the best way to build the Model T. So I find that really amazing for 1908 when the car was first made all the way through 1927 when this car was made. So the way I took this apart is you have your U-joint that goes on the inside of this ball and then the shaft itself which is on the inside of this tube. So on the opposite end there is the gear that meshes with the differential and it has a nut and a cotter pin on the inside of the nut here. So you can pull out the cotter pin in this nut, but this gear has to be pulled off with a puller and has to be pressed back on. So kind of a pain to take that off and you don't need to take that off. On the other side is the U-joint and this fits inside of this ball and has two little access holes on each side here. These access holes have a nut or rather a bolt that screws into here. Real shallow head on it, just barely sticks up above the surface there. But you pull out the bolt on each side of the access holes, there's two, one, on each side 180 degrees apart. And then you can get a punch in there and punch out the pin that holds on the U-joint. So this is the pin, it came out in two pieces when I pulled it out. But you get a punch in there and rotate the shaft until you can see the pin through it. And then just punch the pin straight through and it pops right out. And then the U-joint pulls out this way off of the drive shaft. So the end of the drive shaft has the squared end with the rounded corners that meshes with the inside of the U-joint. So that's how you have to pull that apart. So I'm going to clean some of the gunky, dirty oil off of these parts and then put it back together. On the other side, you have the bearings. So on this side, there is a bearing that is housed on the inside of this piece. So this drive shaft lines up about like that on the inside of it and this piece is right here providing the outside surface for this roller bearing. So you have the roller bearing and then you have a ball bearing for a thrust surface on the inside of here. So both of those together are sort of the bearing package for this car. They seem to be in good shape. I'm going to clean up the gunky oil off of them again. 
so that they're smooth and ready to go. And you can't take these off without taking off this gear because the shaft is only machined on the end here. So this diameter is a tiny bit bigger than this diameter because this is machined and this isn't. So these won't come off because the diameter is too big. So I don't have to take them off. I'm gonna clean them up the way it is and leave them there. So you have the bearing on this side. On the other side, there is a bushing on the inside of here that sort of supports some of the weight from this. Part of it's supported by the U-joint itself being connected to the transmission. But there is a bushing in there, and those go out faster than the bearings do. The bearings are not, I, they say they don't go bad very often. So those really aren't a concern. This bushing is more of a concern. It didn't feel loose. I couldn't feel any movement in there, so I'm not going to mess with it. It's a big pain to get it out of there, press it out, and get a new one in. So I'm not going to do that now. If I end up needing to do it later, it's really easy to pull this piece back out of the car and do it at that time. So I'm not going to mess with it. I'm going to clean these up paint them and then put it back together and put the gaskets back on it. We have a gasket that goes on this piece that connects to the transmission. And then you have your gasket that connects this bearing assembly, one on each side of this where it connects to the torque tube and to the differential. So I'm gonna get those pieces cleaned up and we'll go from there. Well, that just about wraps up today's video. We have taken a look at the rear axle, differential, and torque tube assemblies. For the next few videos, we're going to be cleaning up these parts and reassembling the entire chassis, as well as looking at the wheels and the engine. So there's a lot of cool stuff coming. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and like this video, and leave me a comment if you have something to say. Until next time, see you later.